If you're as active on tech forums and tech YouTube channels as I am, you would know a lot of people are complaining that the new MacBook Pros are outdated and are using older hardware. Hi, my name is Hassan and today we'll look into these complaints. The first myth is that Apple is using the old DDR3 RAM instead of the latest DDR4 which a lot of manufacturers have installed in their laptops. The problem with this statement is, to begin with, the new MacBook Pros do not use DDR3 RAM. What they use is called an LTDDR3 RAM, that is low power DDR RAM. The major difference between both is that LPDDR3 uses less power than DDR3, especially on standby. It uses less power and generates less heat, so they are more useful for portable devices, especially as they have less strain on the battery. Now, people might say, why doesn't Apple use LPDDR4? Well, the reason is, they are not that widely available in the market. Only in October of this year, Samsung introduced the first 8GB LPDDR4 RAM. So it would be too late in the development cycle of the new MacBook Pros to introduce them. In future refresh, we'll most probably see them. So the myth that Apple is using an outdated RAM is false as they are using the latest available generation of LPDDR RAM. Yes, Apple made a trade-off and are using low power DDR RAM instead of DDR3 or 4. But the thing is, you get some benefits out of it. First of all, as it uses less power, you get better battery life. Secondly, it generates less heat. And on lower temperature, dynamic RAM, DRAM, needs to refresh much less than it needs to if the temperature is higher. So you might actually get better performance. So yes, the myth that Apple is using outdated RAM is completely false. The second myth, and the most annoying myth if you ask me, is people complaining about why is Apple using Skylake processors instead of the latest 7th gen KB Lake processors. To get further into this, first we need to cover some basics. The first term that we need to understand is TDP, Thermal Design Power. Now what exactly is TDP? It is the amount of heat a processor generates in average to higher end use depending on the manufacturer's documentation uh, which the cooling system of a machine needs to dissipate. So how does it affect us? Basically, higher the TDP, the more the heat the processor would generate. To make it a bit more relevant to our discussion, basically, TDP is directly proportional to the amount of power your uh, chipset is going to use. Uh, to understand the whole concept a lot better, there's a very good video by Linus in their TechQuickie series that I will have in the description below. So basically, a higher TDP uh, processor uses more power and generates more heat, but at the same time, it gives you better performance when it uses that much more power. Now the second concept that you need to understand is that for a given generation, Intel launches a large set of processors and they are divided into different series. You have the K-series, which is a much higher TDP series that is mostly used in desktops. For laptops and mobile computing, they have two major series. The HQ series, which is the higher TDP and usually uses, uh, has a TDP of around 45 watts. And then the U series, which is a more energy efficient series, which has uh, a TDP of around 15 watt to 28 watt. Now, the myth is that Apple is using old dated Skylake processors instead of incorporating the latest KB Lake processors in their new MacBook Pros. So, let us start with the 15 inch uh, MacBook Pro and work our way down to the lower, less powerful MacBook Pros. The 15 inch MacBook Pro comes with a Skylake i7. Apple does not advertise the exact model of the processor. But if you match the specs against the spec sheet of Intel, uh, we come to know that the baseline 15 inch is using an Intel 6700 HQ processor. This is a quad core processor of the HQ series that has a TDP of 45 watts. So why is Apple using the outdated Skylake processor instead of using the latest KB Lake ones? Well, there's a small problem with that. At the moment, the only i7 KB Lake processor available in the market is a dual core one. There are no quad core KB Lake processors available in the market 
and none of the Kaby Lake processors available are from the HQ series, the one that uses a higher TDP of 45 watts. So it's clear that for the 15 inch variant, Apple did not have a 7 generation choice of processor to use in their machine. Now let's move on to the 13 inch variant. Let's start with the touch bar model and then we'll move to the non-touch bar because that is a longer discussion. The touch bar model baseline comes with an Intel Skylake i5 processor. Again, Apple did not advertise the exact model of the processor, but it's not difficult to find out which model it is. So, the 13-inch MacBook Pro with touch bar uses an Intel 6360U processor, which is a dual-core processor with a TDP of 28 watts. Now we know that the 7th generation Intel KB Lake i5 dual-core processors are available. But when we look at the specs of them, they are 15 watt TDP. So these are the processors that use less, in, less power and generate less heat, but at the same time are less powerful than the 28 watt Skylake processor. Again, there are no 28 watt TDP KB Lake processor available in the market. So this is the best option that Apple had to use in their touch bar 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, finally, we move to the 13 inch non touch bar MacBook Pro, the very baseline, the one that has the slowest specs. Now, this one uses again a dual core Skylake processor uh, with a clock speed of 2.0 gigahertz. Now, as I've discussed before, Apple never advertises the exact chipset number, but we can easily find that out. So, this particular model of the MacBook Pro is using an Intel i5-6360U processor. This is a dual core processor with a TDP of 15 watt. Now here is the interesting part. 15 watt KB Lake processors are available in market. Uh, the model being um, i5-7200U, the model that is being used in Dell XPS 13 for example. Now why did Apple pick an older generation Skylake processor when a similar KB Lake processor was available? Well, the thing is that the non-touch bar 13-inch MacBook Pro does not come with a dedicated GPU. So it uses the integrated GPU in the chipset. And the model that the MacBook Pro are using comes with an Iris 540 graphics. Compare this to the equivalent KB Lake model, the Intel i5-7200U. That model comes with an Intel HD 620 graphics. Now, if we put the processing power to the side for a while, and look at the graphical performance only. The Intel Iris 540 comes with an embedded DRAM of 64 MB, while the HD 620 in the KB Lake has none. Moreover, the Intel Iris 540 integrated GPU that comes with the Skylake chipset has 48 execution units, compared to the KB Lake chipset with the Intel HD 620 graphics has only 24 execution units. If we look at the graphical computational power, the Intel Iris 540 in the Skylake gives a performance of 806.4 gigaflops. Compare this to the latest KB Lake Intel HD 620. Their value varies somewhere from 384 to 403 gigaflops. So, basically, the Intel Iris graphics in the Skylake processor is twice as fast as the Intel HD graphics in the KB Lake processor. Now when it comes to computational power, Intel claims that the KB Lake processor gives you around 10% better processing power than the Skylake variants. Now if we look at the Geekbench score for the new MacBook Pro 13 inch without touch bar that has a Skylake i5 processor versus a Dell XPS 13 that comes with the i5 KB Lake processor we will see that the difference in computational power is not that much, give or take 10%. So, Apple had to make a trade-off. Either go with the KB Lake processor and get 10% better processing power, or go with a Skylake processor that comes with an Intel Iris graphics and get 50% better graphical performance. In my humble opinion, Apple made the right trade-off. I would rather have double the graphical performance instead of having 10% more processing power. Now, I hope you can put these two myths to rest and realize Apple selected the best possible hardware for the new MacBook Pro. 
You could claim that Apple could have gone with DDR4 memory or could have used NVIDIA's graphical chipset and gotten better performance. But that would have meant that Apple would have had to sacrifice on battery life. And Apple has always struck a very good balance between performance and battery life. Now I'm not saying that the new MacBook Pro by Apple is a flawless machine and the perfect laptop. There are a couple of issues. First of all, the issue with ports. At least include an SD card reader and one USB type A port so we can use our old devices. Secondly, People are not really happy with the keyboard. It has only 0.5 mm of travel and it makes a very loud clicky noise. Of course, this is a very subjective topic and a lot of people enjoy the new keyboard and a lot of people don't. But we should still have a keyboard with more travel and which would not make such, uh, such a loud noise. Now, as I've discussed, these laptops have issues. But what irritates me the most is people claiming things that are factually wrong. The processor that these machines are using are some of the best processors available in the market and there are no better alternative for the purposes these processors are used, as we have discussed in this video. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and this cleared up a lot of misconceptions that people have regarding these machines. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll hopefully get my hand on the new MacBook Pro 13 inch without the touch bar tomorrow. The shipment has been delayed but it is scheduled for tomorrow, so I will get my hands on that and do an unboxing video ASAP for you guys. Again, leave your suggestions for a good YouTube name for this channel, and if I select yours, I will give you a shout out in the next video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.